In this video, we will perform the installation, review, and performance testing of Sparky Linux. From its website, we downloaded the ISO image of version 8.1 LXQT. Sparky Linux started in 2011, based on Ubuntu and called U17R, and then switched to Debian and was renamed Sparky Linux. Version 8 is codenamed The Seven Sisters. It has good hardware detection, recognized the Wi-Fi adapter, and we entered the network and password details. Then, we launched the Calamares installer. We selected the language, location, and keyboard layout. This is the stable version based on Debian stable, with a semi-rolling release based on Debian testing. Next, we selected the disk to install on, choosing the option to erase the disk. We entered the username, user password, and root password. We waited for the installation to complete. Sparky Linux offers ISOs for LXQT, MATE, XFCE, and KDE, in addition to a minimal version, the CLI version, and a version for ARM. Afterward, we restarted the computer and waited for Sparky Linux to boot for the first time. Upon entering, a welcome window appeared, and we were presented with the LXQT desktop. We performed a review of the desktop, the panel, and the menu, which is very organized, well presented, and comes with many pre-installed applications. We opened the terminal, enlarged the font for better visibility, and updated the system. We checked if FastEtch and SysBench were installed. Since they were not, we installed the FastFetch and SysBench packages to gather system information and evaluate the distribution, respectively. We ran FastFetch, which provided details about the kernel, the desktop environment, the window manager, initial memory, and disk installation size. We ran LXQT about to check the version. We used commands to obtain the same data to compare it with the results from FastFetch. The information showed version 8.0, even though we had downloaded the correct 8.1 ISO. Therefore, we ran update and upgrade commands, and now we have version 8.1. Next, we performed the Y2038 bug test and ran the system deanalyze command to measure the system's boot time, excluding the firmware time. We then used SysBench for the evaluation, starting with the CPU test, observing the single thread performance, and then the five thread performance through mathematical operations. We continued with thread and mutex tests to analyze the processor's concurrent load management and its resource locking and efficiency, respectively. We evaluated both memory read and write performance using a sequential benchmark to measure how well the system handles memory operations. Afterward, we prepared the necessary files to test disk input and output, and then we executed the test to determine the storage performance. We ran the top command to measure the memory consumption of Firefox with one tab open, with no active extensions, to observe the initial resource usage. We then opened a second tab and loaded a video, followed by a third and a fourth tab, observing how memory usage increased with each additional tab. We have now completed the review and evaluation of Sparky Linux 8.1 and we will analyze the results observed and measured during the tests and observations. Sparky Linux uses the Debian 13 kernel version. It installed 2350 packages. It uses a recent version of LXQT as the desktop environment and OpenBox as the window manager. The initial memory consumption was 0.95 GB, which is an average value. As for disk installation, it took up 6.5 GB, which is an appropriate amount of space. Sparky Linux does support the Y2038 bug, and its boot time was 32 seconds, one of the best boot times compared to other distributions. In the CPU tests with SysBench, it achieved more than 1,026 events per second, a very impressive result for the tested computer, along with the thread test. The thread test performed very well with 1,110 events per second. Similarly, the Mutex test achieved 11.62 events per second, both remarkable results. In the memory read and write tests, the values were also excellent, indicating efficient memory access management in this distribution. Among the various open Firefox tabs, it consumed an average of 382 megabytes per tab, an average value compared to the other distributions tested. Regarding disk read and write, it achieved 11 megabytes per second for reading and 7.5 megabytes per second for writing, which are very good results in the tests performed. In conclusion, Sparky Linux is a lightweight distribution with high performance, quick installation, and excellent hardware detection. It is one of the best distributions. 
That's all for now, we'll continue with the performance tests. If you liked the video, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications. See you next time.